England and Ireland, folks. It's five tries to one. Ireland pretty comfortable over England and Dublin. 100th game for Keith Earls, capped off with a try. Another red card for England. We'll go through some of the key events and stats, and you guys can let us know your thoughts on how this one went. Um, 430 odd kickoff for those of us here in NZ, but it was my second game of the day, so I was certainly well and truly awake and ready for this one. It starts with a wee bit of some, some pointage. I mean, England get a, a penalty through George Ford early, a nice settler away from home. You're in Dublin, you've been written off. What a way to start the game, but with a lead, three points to nil. And then um, it didn't last long. I mean, Ireland got themselves in front. Um, James Lowe just has such a boot on him, doesn't he? What a boot. Gives uh, gives Ireland some great field position. And to be honest, that's really what sets up their first try because from deep in their own half, England don't really exit that well. They managed to box kick it around about to halfway. And then Ireland just pushed back, man. Josh van der Fleer. Late pass through to Peter Armani into a gap, and he gets it to Aki. All of a sudden, it is not even 10 minutes in, and it's 7 points to 3. And then, I mean, the game does descend a little bit into some kind of messy, scrappy play. After that kind of nice clicking for the Irish try. I mean, England are guilty of a few soft penalties. Ribbons gives a soft one away offside. George for not rolling, and then Ireland can see their soft one obstruction at the line out so unable to capitalize on the couple of English penalties then Ireland give away another one for not rolling England opt for a penalty shot but it's wide so nothing much is really going right for either side Ireland's line out is messy uh Keenan kicks it out of the full England are putting a lot of aerial ball through but the Irish guys are really eating it up and then a lot of it's not even contestable it was kind of surprising why would you kick to Mac Hansen and Hugo Keenan and then the boot of James Lowe uh, and not even be able to contest it in the air? I don't really, I don't really get it, but um, that's the, that's the, I mean, they were playing territory. They certainly did all right on the territory front, did England. If there's one area they won, they won the territory stat. So well done. That's, um, that's one thing that they were doing. Um, scrum penalty went, uh, went Ireland's way on 38 minutes, but it was a little bit costly. Because starting hooker Dan Sheehan had to go off. He seemed to have maybe hurt his ankle or his leg. Uh, hopefully it's just precautionary. But we've seen a couple of guys in recent weeks kind of go off under their own steam. And then it ends up being a lot worse. But knock on wood, that um, that's not the case for old uh, Dan Sheehan. But um, that scrum penalty actually set up the second try of the game. So it came at a cost with Dan Sheehan going off. But um, good field position. A lot of phases from Ireland is what they do. You got Peter Armani going down the left wing. <laughs> he was going for the line. Like he was 25 meters out, but he still wanted to go for it. Um, not able to get it, but then quick ball. And Mac Hansen in off his wing with the cross kick to Ringrose, who is out on the wing. He's able to step past Stewart. And uh, it's 12-3 with a misconversion from Bird on the sideline. And the goal kicking wasn't great, to be honest. Neither side um, will be that chuffed with how the goal kicking went but it was a nice try 12 points to three that's the way we go in at half time run meters are 237 to 156 england have been doing a wee bit more kicking 18 to 15 but clean breaks is four to one defenders beaten is 12 five and offloads is four zip so all the kind of flashy uh more x factor stats are certainly in ireland's favor at half time england start with the um, with the advantage in the second half, man, they go through a bunch of phases. It's a poor Irish exit, but I mean, Ben Young just chucks the ball at George Ford's ankles. He can't pick it up, so kind of lost opportunity, but soft. Um, then England are a bit muddled in their own half. I don't mean to be negative because they do have some positives in this game to the English. Um, they kind of kicked it a wee bit less after the Vooney Polo red card, but we'll get to that in a bit. Um, like, I think it was Young's again kind of missed a, a kick through. They end up muddling through like it's a bit of hot potato between um, Young's, Ford and Stewart, and they end up getting a penalty conceded off their feet. Ireland go for the corner, but England, to their credit, do stop the Irish Mall, uh, which was good. But then from the scrum, Ireland win a penalty. And then from that from that penalty, the Irish line out's not straight. Then from that scrum, England win a penalty. So that's what I mean about it. it's a bit scrappy. Neither side was really able to kind of wrestle the momentum from that period. But then biggest talking point of the second half is probably 
the Billy V high tackle shoulder to the head of Andrew Porter. It's an initial yellow card. He's off in the Naughty Boys chair. It goes off for review. In the meantime, Ireland punish. And Ireland, it was the theme of this game. Like, you make a mistake or you give them some field position. They didn't do it every time. Like I mentioned, their line out mucked up a few times, but they can punish you if you give them half a chance, man. I mean, uh, they go patient. They go patient like that Irish sides like to do. I mean, that quick recycle ball after an early break on the right wing. England, you feel like, went close a few times at the breakdown. They could have potentially pinched it, but just couldn't quite grab it. Uh, James Ryan trucks them up with a big carry, and eventually it is a Ross Byrne wide ball uh, to James Lowe, and he's able to go over on 55 minutes to make it 17-3, and then to make matters worse for England, uh, Billy V's yellow is upgraded to a red. So, um, yeah, they're looking at playing the last kind of quarter of the game or in a bit more with a, uh, with a man down and trailing by a pretty significant margin. To be honest, I would have liked to see Theo Dan come on at this point. I have been harping on about the underuse of some of the kind of third choice guys behind Cowan Dickey and George for a long time with England since Borthwick took over. Uh, he does get, I think, 13 minutes in this game. But I would have liked to see him. Just just bring him on, man. I mean, at, at 17-3 with a red card, nobody is expecting you to win the game. I know it can get worse, but it's a Rugby World Cup warm-up game. And Theo Dan's played like less than half an hour of Test Rugby, so please give him some more time. He does get on, but anyway. Uh, there's a standing ovation for Keith Earls when he comes on for his 100th test, which is phenomenal. Uh, Ireland's defence holds for about nine English phases before uh, winning a breakdown penalty, which was also pretty phenomenal. It didn't look like they were going to get broken. Uh, James Ryan, of all people, puts a dinking kick through for, for Keith Earls, which was phenomenal, but uh, Earls couldn't get it because um, one of the English guys got back to grab it. But um, yeah, it was a bit of a weird one. And then Etoje gives away a high tackle, um, which, again, speaking of just being punished, it just leads to an Irish try, man. You can't give them field position. Uh, it looks like they're going to maul it. They don't. It's a good bit of variation from Ireland. They go off the top, give it to Prendergast, big carry, and then England advantage for offside, so giveaway advantage. So, I mean, pick and go from Ireland, then wide to Hanson. That's a great wide ball from Byrne again. He finishes with a couple of try assists, even if his goal kicking wasn't quite on song. Gibson Park kind of put Byrne in a little bit of space to be honest, gave him a little bit of extra time. And then again, a step, a final step on Freddie Stewart to, to go for the try. So 22-3, um, it's, it's looking like a pretty hard day at the office for England. They did at least get a kind of consolation try, which was pleasing because their try scoring record England has not been great. They've not been scoring a lot. Um, they were kind of having to chuck it around a bit with Billy V, you know, gone uh, for the game. It starts with a Danny Kerr tap, interestingly. A few pick and goes and sinker goes over. So there was nothing real. Um, yeah, it wasn't kind of pre-planned move. It wasn't a set play or anything, but it was just a bit of determination from the English guys. So good on them, man, because the game was dead and buried for them. Uh, they're only really playing for pride, but they, they did get a bit back in the jersey with that one. So 22-10. But then they immediately conceded points from scoring that try so from going from that consolation kind of hold your head high moment they immediately conceded like i think it was laws one carry from the restart they got turned over to pilfer from ireland and then uh man that guy keith earls in his hundredth game from the turnover ball is able to to get it and he had to work for it man i mean bundy Arke spots him out wide just a huge pass and keith earls not the tallest guy but he jumps grabs above his head Heads for the goal line, does a weak kind of forward roll as he goes over. So it's thing of beauty stuff. The crowd goes bananas. Simon B. Zebo was um, in the comms and he wasn't the one with the microphone to his mouth, but you could hear him screaming his head off in the background. Um, great stuff for the for the crowd. And Keith Earls even cracked a slight smile. So that's how you know he was pretty chuffed. But yeah, 29-10. That's the final score. So um, yeah, like I said, man, another... Another kind of low scoring in terms of tries, uh, loss, and another red for England. Ireland certainly didn't look at their their sharpest. Like I mentioned, their line out let them down a few times in attacking territory. But how many times do you give them field position and they just punish you? 
So it's only really Ireland in third gear, and they still finish 29-10 um, with five tries to one. Uh, run meters 440 to 482. So England actually edged the run meters in the second half. The possession finish is pretty even, but England win the territory battle 59-41. Clean breaks is 6-3 to Ireland. Remember, it was 4-1 at halftime. So if anything, England kind of upped their game by getting two in the second half, only one in the first. Uh, defenders beaten 24-19 to Ireland. Penalties conceded 13-10, England conceding more, and then turnovers conceded 15-12 to England, so conceding more. You still feel like if they can cut down on some of the errors, make the kicking a little bit more contestable, maybe they can get in there, but in a team, English team, which we've seen, there's some bloody good game breakers in that side. They still seem to be lacking that kind of bit of X factor. Yeah. Um, ben Earl, 11 from 13 tackles in the losing shift. I mean, that guy Theo Dan, in that 13 minutes, he gets three runs, 39 metres, a clean break, and three defenders beaten, making him one of England's kind of top performers. George had four carries for seven metres. I know different players, but can Theo Dan please have some more minutes? Please? Anybody? Uh, Keenan at the back for Ireland, 122 metres. Clean break, three defenders beaten. Uh, Hanson, four defenders beaten for him, 42 metres. Try and a try assist, nice wee kick through. Ross Byrne, a couple of try assists. Tyke Byrne, 16 from 18 tackles. Prendergast was busy, 11 tackles from him. A few good carries, but um, yeah. Pretty uh, pretty much, I think, one of the kind of semi-expected results. 29-10, like I mentioned, it was a bit scrappy at times, but these warm-up games are about getting that rust off. So yeah, we'll see how things go. We'll see what happens with Billy V and the judiciary next week, but it is a little bit troubling. Um, Samoa await Ireland, and uh, England await Fiji as we edge ever closer to the World Cup. If you want England rugby gear, and you're an England fan, England rugby store, I'll put a link down in the description there to fill you the channel. So any jerseys you buy from them, use the link, man. Two cents gets a cut. Doesn't cost you any more, but... Two cents get to find his feet. Hooray. But um, yeah, you guys let us know your thoughts on the game. I'm off to watch France take on Fiji and hopefully the sun will come up here in NZ. You guys take care and um, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.